I think today uh, we're going to do a little bit more prawning and we're going to go after some sea urchins and maybe some sea cucumbers, some purple urchins, green urchins and uh, maybe try and catch some lingcod today. We're going to go to Pete and Sarah's at Denham Bay today and uh, they have a beautiful outside kitchen so Tojo can cook at the outside kitchen, very nice setting and the setting's in Denham Bay just north of Stewart Island and it'll take us about oh, an hour and a half to get there from here. My name is Carl Peterson. Uh, I'm a sports fishing guide and uh, wildlife tour operator. And I've been uh, working here in the Inside Passage for quite a number of years. And uh, take people out and basically kind of put a trip together for whatever they would like to do. Uh, overnight trips, I run uh, a 42 foot boat here and do overnight trips or day trips and also do west coast uh, fishing adventures uh, off the west coast of Vancouver Island. Uh, my name is Steve Patterson, uh, born and raised on Vancouver Island, uh, fourth generation um, avid sports fisherman. I operate a fresh and saltwater guiding business, uh, bear watching. So I do the same as Carl. I own a 30 foot sport fishing boat and we do wilderness trips for bear watching and fishing and freshwater fishing. Your basic sports fishing license enables you to target, if you have the salmon conservation stamp on the license, uh, you can target Chinook salmon, coho salmon, all five, five of the salmon species. And uh, you can also uh, target halibut, lingcod, rock cod, uh, kelp greenlings, urchins, sea cucumbers, uh, many, many different. Ben, yeah, basically anything that lives yeah, in the ocean. Yeah, basically, and enables you. They all have a certain amount of limits, daily limits, and a uh, and a two-day catch retention limit that you can have in your possession limit. Um, but all of them are all different. They're for the opportunities that we're allowed. They're very, very affordable, easily to get. You can get them online or at um, a fishing tackle store or even a um, gas station. So they're readily available and an incredible value for what opportunities that we're allowed to, to enjoy. Yeah, so it's, people coming here shouldn't be intimidated by having to have a license because they're easy to get and uh, allow us a lot of opportunities for fishing and shellfish. Well, basically you can go fishing for just about anything any month of the year. Uh, it's a lot quieter in the fall, uh, late fall and winter months and early spring, which I like to actually go out because there's really not many people around. So it's a much more enjoyable experience for many, not for all, but you get to diversify and go clam digging and oyster picking and prawning uh, and crabbing. Yeah, during those months, there's not so many salmon to catch. There is some at certain places. Uh, winter Chinook fishing, there is a possibility too. Whereas the summer is the one that's sought out most by most tourists. They want to come for the late June, July and August. That's when the prime salmon species, the five, the five species are actually southbound going to their parent rivers. So you get numbers. So of course the fishing is much better. Well, I think for both of us, um, I mean, sure, fishing is a passion, but we have a lot um, of other things that people can enjoy here as far as um, wildlife watching, um, bear watching. There's a lot of opportunities to just enjoy nature. There's some incredible hiking trails that are accessible from the ocean and different marinas. So uh, some of the trips that we would like to do um, 
are, you know, multifaceted as far as fishing and wildlife viewing. So lots of opportunities for bald eagles and black bears, grizzly bears. And lots of eating seafood. Lots Great of eating seafood. seafood. Great seafood, lots of, uh, it's very enjoyable. Everybody gets to lend a hand and steam fish and steam prawns and crabs and, and, uh, and enjoy it, enjoy the fare. It certainly isn't strictly for fishermen. There, yeah, there's much more to enjoy. And it's a chance to get away from the hectic city life and just come to a place like this where there's, well, no cell phone in most cases. Yep. <laughs> and the cruising's fantastic. You know, cruising in the boat and it's warm and if it is raining out, the boat's nice and warm and you got hot coffee and you got hot meals and you can still look out and see the beauty that BC has to offer on the coast here. Well, again, back to what we were saying before about it being year round, because some of the areas that we go to are very protected, um, even in the off season when there's chances for um, not always ideal weather, um, it's very protected so you can enjoy it in relatively safe, calm water. Uh, we'll stop in at places along the way uh, for people to stretch their legs that has a dock uh, or find a nice beach. But yeah, we don't really use the marine parks. They're small um, and they're just, uh, they're, I mean, basically, as far as I'm concerned, the whole coast is a marine park because it, it's not populated. Very, very small populations of people and very small little coastal communities and villages along the way. And uh, I mean, you can stop just about anywhere you want and, you know, anchor out and take the skiff to the shore and go walk the beach. And there's no one there. Well, this trip with Tojo has been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, having a master Japanese chef on board has been wonderful. This is the second trip that we've done and we're planning to do another trip on the west coast where I salmon fish and halibut fish in the summertime. Uh, it's just been a great trip. Very nice and uh, I don't think I've eaten so much food in quite a while. <laughs> but uh, there is no best trip um, because everyone is always different. You never know what you're going to see. Uh, you never know when the dolphins are going to show up. You never know when you're going to see, you know, the sea lions. There's a lot of wildlife to enjoy here.